and I will be leading you through this section on green formulations and in this first part we will be discussing the general topic around green formulations and focusing a little bit on the solvents used in agrochemical formulations. So before we go too much further, I think it's quite important that we look at that word green and what does that word green mean? And, and I want you to take some time to think about what does the word green mean to you when you're thinking about agrochemical formulations. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds to think about that and perhaps write down some of your ideas. So 30 seconds from now. Ten seconds remaining. So time's up, and uh, I tried to think about what you might have been thinking of as you were contemplating the word green in terms of agrochemical formulations. So perhaps you were thinking about uh, what could be called human friendly and that your agrochemical green formulation was in fact human friendly and that was one of the main factors making it green. Or perhaps you wanted to extend away from human and talk about the environment in general and that a green formulation is something that is environmentally friendly. Perhaps that was the key criteria in your mind. Um, but maybe you tried to be using another word um, and you use the word eco-friendly. And then, of course, what I'm going to ask you is what did you mean by eco-friendly? Is that a combination of human and environmentally friendly? Just what is it? Another term I thought you might be thinking of and is often used is the word sustainable. And that sustainability is key for a green agrochemical formulation, be that the formulation or be that the ingredients that are going in there. But you need to be careful with the word sustainable, as we've seen with palm oil, and that sustainable needs to be well defined and needs to mean everything. But perhaps, as well as sustainable, you thought, well, it's natural, and that's what's going to be the key element that makes my agrochemical formulation green. Well, is natural actually any safer or are any better than chemical derived materials? Well, I guess. Sometimes you instinctively think they will be, but we as chemists would know that 100% of the time it is not the case that natural ingredients are safer than their chemical equivalents. But perhaps you were thinking of low toxicity, and that was the key element of the green formulation, and that was how it was defined in your mind. Well, I guess the problem and why I've taken you through this exercise is there is no clear definition for the word green. And when you're marketing, then you probably could cynically say that, well, green is whatever you want it to be. Well, what we're going to try and do in this section really is to take through some, some actual specifics and try and talk more about what really green means in terms of some factors. So let's have a look at something much more specific around what you might do if you were going green in agrochemical formulations. Well, perhaps one of the most specific things you can do is you can look to reduce volatile organic compounds, or VOCs as they are often used. And one of the main ways of doing that is to use less toxic solvents. So we all know that solvents are very essential in all agrochemical formulations, but the use of less toxic solvents could very easily lead you to call your formulation a greener formulation. Perhaps you may use less toxic surfactants and adjuvants in your formulation. And of course, if you lower the toxicity, then again, you may, as we discussed previously, call your formulation something that is less toxic and something that is greener. In terms of the adjuvants and continuing on that, there may well be an adjuvant that you can use which has lower fish toxicity. And the high profile case of this adjuvant is obviously the surfactants non alphenol ethoxylates or NPE. And another terminology that has become very um, high profile and has led to some regulation is the term of endocrine disruptors. 
and if you want to see how exactly those are dealt with in EU regulation, then you can follow this link through to the ECPA website. But before we look at all of those, let's have a look at the solvents. And following on from the terminology of old and new, what are the old, in inverted commas, solvents that you may find in agrochemical formulations? Well, they will tend to be petroleum based. They will be aromatic. It could be that you are using xylene or the term solveso, which has become a catch all, but is, of course, a trademark. But you may be using something called 100, 150 or 200. You may also use NMP, N-methylpyrrolidone or isoforone. So those are the old solvents. But if we were going to look at some of the new solvents, what might we be thinking of when we say new solvents? Well, those new ones could be a natural vegetable oil. You could also use some long chain aliphatic carboxylic acids. You also may use triglyceride esters. Or some methylated vegetable oils. And of course, all of those um, in many cases come from natural or what might be called sustainable sources. But before we all go rushing off and developing our formulations, now green formulations, on new, is there a way that these old solvents can be made greener? If we look at the Solveso range, which as I mentioned before, is actually uh, the trademark for ExxonMobil, ExxonMobil uh, chemicals range of solvents, um, we can see that there is the 100, 150 and 200 traditional Solveso, but there are also the naphthalene depe depleted grades. And these mean that they have less than 1% of naphthalene in the final formulations. And of course, naphthalene has been called a possible carcinogen. So if we think about some of the definologies we, definitions we've used previously, and terminologies, then if we have a naphthalene depleted grade in our formulation, we could in many ways claim that this is a greener formulation. And as you can see from this table, the 150 naphthalene depleted grade is no different in terms of its physical characteristics to the traditional Solveso 150. And the same for the 200 naphthalene depleted grade. We can see that the distillation range and the dry point distillation point and the flash points are in essence the same. So a change from a standard Solveso grade to a naphthalene depleted grade, we would not expect to see any difference in its properties, but we could in fact call it a greener formulation. So if we move on and see that there are other products available similar to Solveso, we can look at the Atasol range, which comes from Total Petrochemical. And in this table, which I've taken from a PDF, which you can get yourself following this link or is also included with the pack, you can see that they have a, a different product in their range, Atasol 115. But if we look at the Atasol 200 and the Atasol 200 ND, again, we can see from the physical properties, there are no discernible differences. So we would not expect there to be any difference in terms of the way that you would formulate these products or indeed in terms of the final properties of the formulation if you used a naphthalene depleted grade, which you could then, of course, call a greener formulation. So if we move on now from the traditional aromatic based solvents to look at some of the new greener solvents that are around and there are many to choose from i've just picked one here from rhodia um, which is based around their iris chemistry and uh, the trade name of rhodia solve um, this product is polar and this range in fact is polar and water soluble and has excellent toxic and environmental profiles it's non-flammable and has a very low vapor pressure and of course, all of those are positive things. It is a patented technology, and you can follow that link through to actually see the patent of, that, that it is based on. And um, it is being used commercially in pesticides at present. 
And if those of you are interested in the chemistry, we have some branch C4 here and, and carboxylic groups and some amine and uh, an ester group there. So that's the basis of the chemistry. So in terms of its chemistry, what actually um, does this range give you in terms of its environmental profile? I've taken then something here from uh, an RSC symposium in 2012 presented by Rodia. And here they've taken and compared the Rhodiosol range and its properties with acetone, DCM, and NMP. And you can see from this table, it's got favorable flammability, it's not flammable, very low loss on evaporation, and from a health and safety point of view, non-toxic and non-irritant. So compared to some of the other traditionally used solvents in agrochemicals, you can see how Rhodiosol would indeed be a step forward. They then come on to look at the actual performance, and here we have a what at the first instance may seem like a very complicated slide where they've compared polar clean with NMP with a range of different actives at different concentrations. The wheel takes a little explanation, but in terms of the performance, if it was at zero and it was just left there with nothing, then it means that it was not soluble whatsoever at that concentration. But this is not the case with any of those. If the wheel, it only goes out to one, that means it was stable for seven days at room temperature. If it went to two, it means it was stable for seven days at zero degrees C, so a more challenging environment. If, however, it goes all the way out to three, then it means it was stable for seven days at zero degrees C, but also with some seeding from the active. So a very stable system according to that methodology. And what you can see is comparing polar clean with NMP in a range of different actives at, at levels used commercially. You can see that the performance of polar clean with NMP is indeed very comparable, um, perhaps over here slightly inferior, but not too bad. Um, so again, you start to see that there are alternatives to NMP and polar clean would be one of those you might want to consider. A similar graph here when they compared its performance to isoforone, again one of those old solvents we've looked at before. And indeed in this case you can see down at the bottom of the wheel and the bottom left corner, you can see actually superior performance to isoforone. So what they've actually shown in many ways is that this is a solvent which you should consider if you're using isoforone or you're using NMP in these type of active formulations. Indeed, in some of their other literature, they have used a blend called Rhodiosol Match 111, and they've looked at a whole range of different actives. And uh, you can pick your favourite active from here, but they've shown that they are all soluble at a commercial range and solubility. So, indeed, there are alternatives to the um, old solvents that you may be using at present.